Welcome back to Learning Anatomy with Dr. Bakari. And if you are visiting this channel for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the lateral plantar nerve. Let's try and use this image by the side for illustration. This is the configuration of the foot. And this is where we have the medial side. On this other side is where we have the lateral side. It is good to place the foot in anatomical position before we try to highlight the region where we have the lateral plantar nerve. And on this medial side is where we have the posterior tibial nerve. This is the posterior tibial nerve here, highlighted in yellow. I have done a lecture on the tibial nerve. If you've not checked that lecture, please kindly go and do so. Around the medial region of the foot is where we have the emergence of the posterior tibial nerve. The posterior tibial nerve is the distal end of the tibia nerve. And at this point here, it is seen to divide into two terminal branches. And this is where we have the medial plantar nerve here, arrowed in green on the medial side. And of course, on the lateral side, we have the lateral plantar nerve. And this is what is arrowed here in red. This lecture will be focusing on the lateral plantar nerve. So ride on with me as I highlight the path or the route through which the lateral plantar nerve runs. So other features that it presents and the branches that emerge from the lateral plantar nerve. The lateral plantar nerve is also referred to as the external plantar nerve. If you revisit our lecture on the medial plantar nerve, we elected in that lecture that the medial plantar nerve can also be referred to as the internal plantar nerve. So the lateral plantar nerve can also be referred to as the external plantar nerve. So it's good for us to note this in case we come across this during the course of study. So the lateral plantar nerve, which is one of the terminal branches of the posterior tibial nerve. Let's try to use this image up here for illustration. This structure that is highlighted here in dotted yellow is the posterior tibial nerve. This posterior tibial nerve is the terminal portion of the tibial nerve. And at this hand, it is specifically referred to as the posterior tibial nerve. So this posterior tibial nerve around the medial side, we already highlighted that this is the medial side and this is the lateral side. We we'll try to keep the structure of the foot in anatomical position so as to be able to understand the specific region where we have the lateral plantar nerve. And at this medial hand here, it is through this region that the posterior tibial nerve will emerge and of course be divided into two terminal branches. And one of which is the medial plantar nerve that is highlighted here at this region. This medial plantar nerve is seen to course along the medial side of the foot. I've also put up a lecture on the medial plantar nerve. If you've not checked that lecture, oh, please kindly go and do so. Why on the lateral side, on the other hand, is where we have the lateral plantar nerve. So if you try to use this image down here for a better illustration, on this side of the foot is where we have the medial side. And on the other hand is where we have the lateral side. If you look closely along the medial side, we have a structure that is referred to as a flexor rectinaculum. This is what is seen to be harrowed here in black. This is a fascia that is seen to run from the medial myelolus down to the calcaneus. So you see this stretch of fibers running across these two subregions. And at this point, you see it transforming the groove that is created by the bones around this space into a canal. And it is through this canal that we have the posterior tibial nerve passing deep. So we have the posterior tibial nerve, of course, running deep to this flexor rectinaculum. And at this terminal hand, where it exits the flexor rectinaculum, you see it terminating into the medial plantar nerve that is highlighted here in yellow, of course, crossing along the medial side of the foot. And we have the second terminal branch that is referred to as the lateral plantar nerve. And this is what is also highlighted here in yellow. Of course, you see it directed towards the lateral side of the foot. This is how the lateral plantar nerve is seen as one of the terminal branches of the posterior tibial nerve. So let's try and drive further on the course that the lateral plantar nerve, of course, runs in able to attain the lateral side of the foot. We said that the emergence of this nerve is from the medial side of the foot. Of course, after emerging from the medial side of the foot, you then see it crossing to the other side of the foot, which of course is on the lateral side. 
you see it emerging from this media side here. Yeah, this is where we have the media planter navier harold in blue and we have the lateral planter navier harold on this side so you have the lateral planter nav emerging from the media side of the foot and of course crossing to the other hand and this is what is also seen to be harold at this region so you see it crossing from the media side where it emerges from to the lateral side just to assume the position of what the name represents which of course is the lateral plantar nerve and this nerve as it runs across from the media side of the foot to the lateral side of the foot it is not seen to run alone it is seen to be accompanied by the lateral plantar artery and this is what is seen to be highlighted here in red this lateral plantar artery is a branch from the posterior tibial artery the posterior tibial artery is branched from the popliteal artery and we know that the popliteal artery is a branch from the femoral artery the femoral artery of course is a branch from the external iliac artery and the external iliac artery is one of the branches of the common iliac and we know that the common iliac artery is a terminal branch of the abdominal aorta. this is where the abdominal aorta, of course bifurcates into the right common iliac and also the left common iliac it's always good for us to trace it back to the root we say that the lateral plantar nerve is seen to be accompanied by the lateral plantar artery just the corresponding name artery and if you go back to our lecture on the media plantar nerve this same expression is also seen by the media plantar nerve where it is also being accompanied by the media plantar artery. So it's good for us to be able to highlight this. And this is how it runs and crosses to the other hand, which of course is the lateral end. So let's drive further on the lateral plantar nerve. Let's see the branches that it gives along the path through which it runs. So first, in driving into the branches of the lateral plantar nerve, we say that this nerve emerges from the media side of the foot, which of course is seen to cross to the other side to assume its position on the lateral side of the foot. Along the path by which it runs, from crossing from the media to the lateral side, you see it giving off a number of branches. And this, of course, have muscular branches that are seen to give innervations to the intrinsic muscles of the foot. So one of the muscles that it supplies is the flexor digitorium accessorius. This is the branch here, harrowed in red. You see that along the path through which it runs, in crossing from the media to the lateral side, it gives off branches along this course. And one of which is the nerve that is seen to provide innovation for the flexor digitorium accessories. And another branch is seen to give innovation to the abductor digiti minimi. And this is what is also seen to be harrowed here in red. So you see these branches emerging along the course that it runs from the media side to the lateral side. So it's not just seen to run from the media side to the lateral side without giving off branches. This is what this means. So you see it giving off two branches to innovate these two muscles. And it is also seen to provide sensory innovations to the lateral anterior one third of the sole of the foot. And these are the sensory branches here, elected in yellow, giving off to give sensory innovations to the lateral anterior one third of the sole of the foot. Let's try and use this image down here for a better illustration in explaining the sensory innovation that is supplied by the lateral plantar nerve. If you look at this configuration here, this is the configuration of the sole of the foot. We know that the sole of the foot is innervated by the tibia nerve. So if you look at this configuration here, this is where we have the medial side and this is where we have the lateral side. So the lateral anterior one third of the sole of the foot is innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. And this is what is captured here at this point. So this region that is harrowed at this point, the sensory innervation of this region is provided by the lateral plantar nerve. And this lateral plantar nerve, we know that it is one of the terminal branches of the posterior tibia nerve. The posterior tibia nerve is the extreme or the terminal region of the tibia nerve. So if the tibia nerve is seen to finally terminate into the medial and the lateral plantar nerve. The lateral plantar nerve is taking up this region here that is harrowed at this point. So this medial anterior to toad, which is highlighted here at this point, is innervated by the medial plantar nerve. So we see that both branches have terminal branches of the tibia nerve, and the tibia nerve is seen as represented in this image to be providing sensory innervations for the bulk of the sole of the foot. And this is what is captured here at this point. It is just that the medial branch 
and the lateral branch are seen to take up specific regions. And if you go more posteriorly at the end here, that is harrowed here in yellow, it is provided by the medial carcana nerve. This medial carcana nerve is also a branch of the tibia nerve, but this branch is giving off why the tibia nerve is seen to pass deep to the flexor rectinaculum. Remember, we tried to establish the flexor rectinaculum in our previous slide. And this is like a fascia that is seen to run from the medial mymololus down to the calcaneus. And as it runs along this course, you see that the posterior tibia nerve is seen to pass deep to it before it finally exits it to give up its terminal branches. During the course of passing deep to this flexor rectinaculum, it is seen to give up the medial calcana nerve. And this medial carcana nerve is seen to provide sensory innovations for the heel. And this is what is harrowed here at this point. And if you go more on this medial head here that is highlighted here in black, the sensory innovation of this region is provided by the salvinous nerve. And of course, on the lateral head here that is harrowed here in purple, the sensory innovation of this region is provided by the sura nerve. The sura nerve is a cutaneous nerve that is formed from both the tibia nerve and also the common fibula nerve. We'll also try to put up a lecture on the sura nerve. So please do watch out for this. It is good for us to also highlight the different nerves that are seen to provide sensory innovations for other specific regions of the sole of the foot. So after the lateral plantar nerve is seen to give off two muscular branches and also sensory branch, it further proceeds in its journey to assume the lateral side of the foot. We know that this nerve would emerge from the medial side and during the course of running from the medial to the lateral, it is seen to give off three branches, two muscular branches and one cutaneous branch. And we've tried to highlight this in our previous slide. So let's try and use this image by the side for illustration. This is where we have the medial plantar nerve that is harrowed here in black. And of course, we have the lateral plantar nerve here that is harrowed here in yellow. This lateral plantar nerve, we already know that its emergence is from the medial side. And during the course of running to assume the lateral side, you see it giving off the branches that we have highlighted in our previous slide. Giving off this number of branches, finally has zoomed in the base of the fifth metatarsal. This is where we have the metatarsal bones around this region. And of course, the fifth metatarsal bone will be located around this space. And around the base of the fifth metatarsal, it tries to terminate into two its terminal divisions. So we have two terminal branches at this region that is arid in purple. We have the superficial branches, and this is what is seen to be arid at this point. Of course, superficially placed. And we also have the branches. And this is what is also seen to be harried here in blue. So we have the lateral plantar nerve. After reaching the base of the fifth metatarsal, you see it dividing finally into two terminal branches. We have the superficial branches and we have the deep branches. So let's try and drive further to see what the superficial and the deep branches of the lateral plantar nerve would innervate at this region. So let's first look through the superficial branches. We already highlighted that at this point, we have the lateral plantar nerve that is harrowed here in purple. And you see it running to the lateral side of the foot, of course, giving off a number of branches along that course before it finally reaches the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. At the base of the fifth metatarsal bone, you see the lateral plantar nerve finally terminating into the superficial branch that is harrowed here in yellow, and also the deep branch that is harrowed here in blue. So this slide will be focusing on the superficial branches of the lateral plantar nerve. So let's see what the superficial branches innervate. The superficial branches of the lateral plantar nerve are seen to finally also divide into the proper digital nerve. And using this hopper image here, this is the proper digital nerve here, arrowed in gray. You can see the proper digital nerve is an emergence of the superficial branches. This is where we have the superficial branches here, arrowed in yellow. So you see it giving up the proper digital nerve here, arrowed at this point. And also the common digital nerve. And this is the common digital nerve that is harrowed here at this upper part. So you see the superficial branches giving off proper digital nerve and also the common digital nerve. This proper digital nerve is seen to give off three sub branches 
to innovate three models, while the common digital nav is seen to provide sensory innovations for the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the fifth toe. So let's try and drive into this to see how this is established. So the proper digital nav, you see it's giving sub branches to innovate the flexor digital minimi brevis, and it's also seen to innovate interosy of the fourth web space. And if you look at the web spaces, because of the way they are created, interosy that is found or located within the fourth web space, we contain the fourth dosal interosy and also the third plantar interosy. But let's try and drive it into this. If you look at the configuration of the foot here, we know that in the foot we have five digits. And because we have five digits, it means we would be having four web spaces. So this is the first web space, this is the second, the third, and also the fourth. And this is what is captured here in this image. Within these web spaces, we have muscles, and these muscles are referred to as the interosis. This interosis are of two components. We have the dozer component and we have the planter component. So let's try and highlight the dozer component first. This is what is seen to be highlighted here in red. So we have each dozer interosy muzzle in each of the four web spaces. And this is what is seen here in this image. So you see that the those are interosy are four in number and are seen to be located within the web spaces. For the plantar component of the interosy muscle, we have three plantar interosy. And because we have three plantar interosy, it is going to be embedded within the last three web spaces. So this is what is seen to be captured here in this image. You have the first plantar interosy within the second web space. We have the second one within the third web space and we have the third one within the fourth web space so you see that the number of the interosy are different within the web spaces and this is why we have this kind of configuration we have four dozer interosy well we have three planter interosy these two components the dozer and the planter are the sub components of the interosy and each of the web spaces of course are seen to contain the component except the first web space that is only seen with just the dozer interosy component so this is how it is highlighted so if we say that the proper digital nerve which is the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve is seen to innovate the interosy of the fourth web space. If you go to the fourth web space, you see that what you have in the fourth web space is the fourth dozer interosy and also the third plantar interosy because we have three plantar interosy and we have four dozer interosy. So if you look at this, you see that we have two interosy within the fourth web space, but the two interosy are the fourth dozer interosy which is highlighted here in red, and also the third plantar interosy. It's good for us to understand this so that it will be easy for us to comprehend. So this is what is innovated by the proper digital nerve. It's a superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. Then if you go to the common digital nerve, the common digital nerve is seen to provide sensory innovation for the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire surface or region of the fifth toe. So if we try to use this image up here for illustration, this is where we have the superficial branch here, arrowed in yellow. And this superficial branch is seen to further divide into the proper digital nerve that is arrowed here in green, and also the common digital nerve that is arrowed here at this point. We've tried to describe the structures that are innovated by the proper digital nerve. For the common digital nerve that is harrowed here at the superior end, you see it providing sensory innovations for the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire region of the fifth toe. So if you look at it, this is what is harrowed here at this point. If you look at these nerves, they are emergence of the common digital nerve, which of course are superficial branches of the lateral plantar nerve. And if you look at the pattern by which they divide as they run towards the digit, you see that they subdivide into to give enough sensory innovation for the different halves of the two. If you try to create this alignment here in dotted red, you see that this is the fourth two and this is divided into two having a medial half and also a lateral half. The medial half of the fourth toe is already taken up by the common digital branches of the median plantar nerve. We've tried to highlight this in our lecture on the median plantar nerve. So for the lateral half, the sensory innovation will be provided by the common digital branches, the superficial branch 
of the lateral plantar nerve. So you see that as they run towards the toe, there is a pattern by which they divide, giving off a branch to supply the lateral half of the fourth toe and another branch to supply the fifth toe. This kind of configuration, we already established, it's also occurring in the digital branches of the medial plantar nerve. So this the kind of expression on the digital branches of the medial plantar nerve is also seen on the digital branches of the lateral plantar nerve. And if we try to use this image down here for a better illustration, this is where we have the sensory innervation that is provided by the lateral plantar nerve here arrowed at this point. And these branches, of course, are given off along the course that it runs from the medial side to the lateral side. Upon reaching the base of the fifth metatarsal, you see it then dividing into superficial branches and also the deep branches. But before that point, it's giving off innervation to supply this specific region. And after its final division, into the superficial and deep branches. You see that the superficial branch has we've elected in this present slide, giving off proper and also common digital nerve. It is the common digital nerve that is then seen to provide sensory innervation for the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire fifth toe. And this is what is captured here in black. So you see the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire surface of the fifth toe receiving its sensory innovations from the common digital nerve. And this is what is presented here in this image. So we see that the other regions of the digits are innovated by digital branches from the medial plantar nerve. We've tried to highlight this in our lecture on the medial plantar nerve. So we have the first, the second, the third, and also the fourth. But of course, it is the medial half of the fourth toe that the sensory innovation is provided by the medial plantar nerve. Why the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire fifth toe, the sensory innovation of this region is provided by the common digital nerve, which of course is a superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So having discussed the superficial branches of the lateral plantar nerve, let's drive further on the deep branches. The deep branches is seen to provide innovations for nine muscles. And we see how this is presented with this slide. So at this region here that is harrowed in black is where we have the lateral plantar nerve. We know that the lateral plantar nerve, upon it accessing or reaching the base of the fifth metatarsal, you see it dividing into the deep branch and also the superficial branch. We've tried to highlight in our previous slide the different structures or regions of the foot that is innervated by the superficial branches. So for the deep branch here that is harrowed here in red, you see that it provides innervations for nine muscles. So let's see how this goes. So you see it providing innovation for the adductor allosis muscle. It's also seen to provide innovation for the iterosy of the first three web spaces. And the iterosy of the first three web spaces will contain the first, the second, and the third dosa interosy, and also the first and the second plantar interosy. Remember in our previous slide, we tried to highlight the interosy muscles and if you go back to this illustration that we used in our previous slide, we say that we have four web spaces because we have five digits. So what we need to do now is to drive into this and see the muscles that are contained within the first three web spaces. So if you look at it, this is the first web space, this is the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. So within each web space, we have two subcomponents of the interosy muscle. We have the dosa interosy and we have the plantar interosy. The structure that is highlighted here in red is the dosa interosy. And we have four dosa interosy. And this is what is highlighted here in red. For the plantar interosy components, we have three plantar interosy components. And these three plantar interosy components are seen to be positioned or located within the last three web spaces and you see it located within the second, the third, and also the fourth web spaces. And this is what is highlighted here in yellow. So you see that the number of the subcomponents of the interosy muscles are different within the web spaces. So if you look at the first three web spaces, what is contained within the first three web spaces that is captured here in black is the first, the second, and also the third dosa interosy. Then we have the first and also the second plantar interosy. The third plantar interosy is contained or located within the fourth web space because we have just three of these muscles. So if you look at it, you look at 
all in all, we have five interosy muscles, and these muscles are innervated by the deep branches of the lateral plantar nerve. Then you also have the deep branches giving innervation to the second, the third, and also the fourth lumbricar muscles. You see that the first lumbricar muscle is innervated by the medial plantar nerve. We've tried to highlight this in our lecture on the medial plantar nerve. So for the second, the third, and also the fourth lumbricar muscles, these muscles are innervated by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So if you had all together, you see that in totality, we have nine muscles innervated by the deep branches of the lateral plantar nerve. And it's good for us to be able to highlight how this number is projected. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.